Now I'll take some questions on home and transfer. The first question is, how can we adjust, how can we justify that the delta V is impulsive? <clears throat> well, uh, this depends on the uh, time of the, the uh, <clears throat> depends on the type of trajectory and on the maneuver time itself. So for example, uh, <clears throat> if you uh, look at an interplanetary trajectory such as the Galileo project that I worked on, uh, if you launch the spacecraft <clears throat> to uh, another planet where it may take years to get there. Uh, if the trajectory is of a type that uh, you can measure its uh, <clears throat> time of flight in years, and then you consider that you're going to do an orbit that, say, takes less than an hour, uh, then we can use uh, the idea that that maneuver happened instantaneously rather than, than it took one hour, because one hour compared to years is a very small percentage. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, the vehicle would move some distance, and the question would be how much has, say, the potential energy changed during that time? If that's an in, in uh, uh, consequential value, then you can get away with the impulse of delta V. And in fact, there's much experience behind this, and so it is known that this, in fact, works. Now, if you're in orbit around the Earth, where it takes 90 minutes to go around in a low Earth orbit, then if you were doing a maneuver that takes one hour long, that would not be impulsive. But if the maneuver took a matter of a minute or a few seconds, then uh, you could get away with uh, an impulsive assumption for your first calculations. You can always verify these things later on by doing a simulation in which uh, you simply use Newton's law, F equals ma, and integrate the uh, change in velocity and find out what, in fact, uh, really happens. So I would say that it really is a ratio uh, if the ratio of maneuver time to uh, trajectory time is a very small number, then uh, your error will also be a very small number. Another question was, what about out-of-plane effects? You know, we talked about how in the Hohmann transfer, uh, you are looking at a circular coplanar orbit. And so this is the basic assumption of a Hohmann transfer. And uh, if you don't make this, if you have a case where the orbit has changed in inclination, then you have to consider the out-of-plane effects as another part of the problem. And it might not be easy to do. In some cases, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, make some simplifying assumptions to compute out-of-plane effects and then add them onto the circular coplanar transfer, uh, the, the transfer between circular coplanar orbits. So this is not an easy question to answer in general. It really depends on the specific problem you're uh, trying to apply the Hohmann transfer to. Okay, that's all I got.